Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of the Star Wars Minute. It's the daily podcast where we analyze, we scrutinize, and we celebrate solo a Star Wars story one minute at a time. I'm Alex Robinson from alexrobinson.fun. I'm Pete the Retailer from petetheretailer.com. And I am John Kavalik from dorktower.com. Hey. Welcome, John. Kicking off another All Star Week <laughs> with the uh, perennial All Star, mm-hmm. John K. You know Yay. it's an All Star Week when, when you hear the, <laughs> the dulcet tones of John Kavalik. <laughs> Me and Bob Euchre. What can I say? <laughs> uh, we're talking about minute one 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 today. Minute one eleven. Uh, it starts off with Han Solo asking Beckett, "Why? <laughs> <laughs> Why not?" Ah, it's a minute later <laughs> with um <laughs> it's a minute later with Dryden uh, Voss thanking Amon for his excellent work being a uh mercenary, I guess. <laughs> being Amon. He's up Amon. Amon. <laughs> um Yes. So three oh yeah, so yeah, starting out the why. Let's start with the why. why? It's a very deep question. Hmm. Don't ask me why. Uh, <laughs> Tell me why, wrong show. <laughs> um, the, the the genuine look. Uh, there's there's so many layers of acting here because it's like the genuine look of hurt on Han's face, but it's not. So it's Alden Ehrenreich pretending that he's somebody who's pretending to be hurt. It's it, acting. It's, yeah, yeah, <laughs> acting. Because I was like, I was no, I was noting it. I was like, oh yeah, he's really feeling like, oh, like. And then I realized what happened, what transpires throughout the course of the of the next couple of minutes. I was like, oh, no, wait a minute, he's not really. He's pretending this. So, so here's a question for you guys: when you mm. when you do one of these shows, mm-hmm. do you like? I mean, I, I, I'm taking it from what you just said that you don't just watch the whole movie right away before the season. But you, you, that sounds like you are literally taking this minute by minute. You haven't <laughs> seen the whole thing in a while. Or uh, have you? It, dep- it, it depends on the movie. Um, <laughs> and, and we're in a weird spot now where I feel like these are recent enough that the, the first couple of times I saw them feels like it just happened. So it's <laughs> like, oh, I don't need to go back. But like, I don't know, I've watched this. I don't know when the last time I watched the whole thing was. It was only 2018, which surprised me when I saw that. It seems like quite a bit further than that. Yeah. Well, yes. (laughs) Time is uh, time is very elastic in this uh, modern age we live in. I uh, early on in the season, I wasn't planning on rewatching it because I've never done that with any of the movies. I've never sat down Mm. and said, "Okay, I'm going to rewatch it specifically because we're about to cover it." But this is the one I was definitely the least familiar with. So Mm. I uh, I only saw it once in the theater, and um. I think when we were a couple of weeks in, I was like, this is ridiculous. People are going to get so angry because we're like, oh, well, how come they don't do that? They should know what they should do. They should do a scene yeah. where Dryden Voss is mad at the, you know, and I'm like, so I, then I sat down and I watched that the whole big thing. Harry guy. <laughs> yeah. That was real. So, hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I did rewatch it probably about three weeks into the season. And then I, then I've, I've only, it. I had only seen this movie once. Um, and I, this is the only star war I've not seen in the theater at any point. Hmm. Hmm. Um, I, I never saw, um, uh, revenge of the Sith, uh, from start to finish until right before Kenobi started Mm -hmm. when, Oh, so you did see it. I did. Yes. I finally seen them all now. Um, We have to re-record your revenge of the Sith now that you're you're more informed. It will be easy because there was no dialogue in it. (laughs) (laughs) Um, but yeah, so, uh, this, I, I saw this, um, uh, maybe, well, once it come on, came on television. So a a year later or something like that. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I had wished I had seen it in the theater because some of the visuals were fantastic. But so you did time, enjoy it? Yes. Yeah, I, I liked it. I liked it. Um, it was there was a lot to enjoy about it. Um, but at the time, it just didn't seem essential, which was weird because this was coming off uh, Last Jedi, wasn't it? This was mm-hmm. right. Mm-hmm. And Six I, months later. I loved Last Jedi. I mean, Last Jedi is like my equal number two with Empire in the mm-hmm. whole run it's just brilliant i was totally psyched about this and solo came out and i just didn't 
feel the need to yeah. rush out to see it and all of a sudden it wasn't there anymore well you're why? alone <laughs> why <laughs> Why? Well, you you <laughs> almost maybe dodged a bullet because a lot of people complained that the, um, you know, the projection was very murky depending on where you saw it. Oh, some some places, um, you know, that were to up to date film. with things, and they were, you know had like digital laser projection and all that stuff. It looked it looked crisp and wonderful, but a lot of places that are just kind of you know using legacy stuff still, it just looked yeah. like a muddled mess. Yeah. No, there are, there are a number of scenes in it, which I, um, first time I saw it, and now yesterday and today, the second time I've seen it, <laughs> um, I remember thinking, boy, you're seeing that Star Destroyer in the middle of the, um, mm -hmm. uh, of the, that was not the Maw yet, it was uh, the Paw, let's call it. Um, <laughs> We're going to talk about uh, Paws in a second. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that was, that was a really terrific visual. And I, or like just the overhead look at the Star Destroyer being built on um Corellia uh was like dang I wish I'd seen that on a big screen that's actually quite lovely yeah but why well, the good news <laughs> is that it is available on blu-ray and digital so we can <laughs> yes. watch it anytime we want <laughs> and, and I did <laughs> um why we're back to why why, why? <laughs> it all comes back to why <laughs> why wing Here's a why. Uh, so uh, Beckett reminds him, he told him not to trust anybody. Mm. Mm -hmm. Because um, the, it, it's binding once you tell somebody that. That's true. It's right. legally <laughs> binding. Well, it's it's a little bit like the, you know, the the thing with the asking the who, you know, the one tells the truth and one tells the lie. Because it's like, <laughs> well, I, I told you not to trust anybody. I'm like, yeah, so I didn't trust you when you said that. So. Mm. You know. The surgeon was a woman. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Where did they bury the survivors? I, I am no man. <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah, it it um it's very, you know, it's this was the big uh was it just at the end of you know, Beckett just walked in at the end of the last minute. This is still we're, yep. we're still recovering from that big shock. Yes, it was yeah. a huge shock. Like, <laughs> he betrayed them. Why? Why? <laughs> Um, yeah, no, I remember when I was a kid watching The Sting uh, mm -hmm. in the theater. This was back in the late 70s, I guess. And I wasn't really following along, but I knew something very clever was happening. And that was kind of the feeling I got watching this bit the first time. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, right. but you know they knew, and she knew you knew they knew, but they didn't know she knew you knew they didn't know that. And <laughs> And, you know, it's, it's the second time it's not as difficult for me to follow along, but the first time I just remember sitting there going, yeah, something clever is just happening here. And I, <laughs> it's, it's probably impressing somebody. <laughs> you know who I, knew? Um, Jocasta knew. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> I haven't foul, seen. Foul Lady Proxima knew. <laughs> I haven't seen the Maltese Falcon in a long time, but uh, uh, that's that kind of reminds me of that, where you're not right. really sure exactly yep. who is everyone is betraying each other. You're not sure. It's it's a it's a. Uh, mm -hmm. But I think they did a good job here. I think of uh, you know a neat little a neat little switcheroo. So uh, yeah, well, well, that's the next minute is the the switch of the switcheroo. But right, yeah, yeah, right. but yeah, yeah. But it does you know to call it. into question. Um, uh, uh um dryden like playing around with the coaxium <laughs> you know if it's like okay yeah the, the stuff it's so obviously fake i'm just gonna throw it against the wall and, <laughs> and <laughs> yeah it could have killed it could have killed everyone yeah. <laughs> oh look at this so real look so real then he drinks it <laughs> <laughs> that solves that problem i guess you can only do it once right oh <laughs> uh, but yeah so, uh, i'm oh, sorry no, I was just going to say uh, to your point. Yeah, it is. It is Han acting upon another layer of acting, which you don't realize until the act goes a little further. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, it, it's um, I. I really enjoyed uh, Aaron Reich's performance through this whole thing. I just wish he sounded a little more like Han. You know, he's, he mm -hmm. he would get the smirk down. Mm. He would. I wish he had shrugged once they discovered the double cross here <laughs> like you know the, 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 yeah, yeah exactly 
Exactly. <laughs> that's, that's the only thing missing. Although I guess again, that's next minute. I'm sorry, next all star. I right. apologize for <laughs> we'll pass that on your territory. I mean, you have you have uh, you know you have uh, territorial rights to the all star. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've got I've first, got a teeny tiny little uh, all star all- green room. Next yeah. first all star <laughs> privilege is what yeah. that is. You can talk about whatever you want. Yes. Uh, well, Pete mentioned it earlier. Uh, Beckett, uh, you know, draws his gun and he's like, "All right, you know, put your." And then he says to Chewie, uh, "Put your hand, put your paws where I can see them." Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, um, put your paws not sure if see. that is the preferred nomenclature or if he's racist or mm. or what. We don't know. No one, no one like reacts and goes like, "Oh man," or you know, no one like <laughs> no one shakes their head in disgust at his his uh his crude reactionary ways. What do you think? What do you think, I John? Think, Pause your hands. I think it's I think it's kind of like, you know, uh racism in the 1970s. Um, you know, on a sitcom. It's like, okay, looking back that was terrible, but you know, it's not it, it does not seem to be at an enlightened point yet in the story because, you know, they are still refusing to serve uh, L3's kind at bars. Um, and there's this underlying, um, yes. Uh, what, what would be the, um, uh, white being privilege? I go, no human, humanoid right. human privilege. privilege. Human, human, human privilege. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's it. Um, so yeah, I think it's just kind of like, you know, an Archie Bunker thing in the star Wars universe. Right. It's like, oh, oh, it's, it's the racist uncle talking again. <laughs> um, and Woody yeah, Harrelson definitely... played Archie Bunker in that remake. Yeah. <laughs> so it works out, it works out perfectly. <laughs> um, but yeah, well, no, it, it's, it's, uh, um, Woke it isn't, that's for sure. <laughs> I, I, Wookie. Since we knew this yeah, was coming Wookie. up. Wookie. 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 Um, Wookie. <laughs> since we knew this was coming up. That's going to be the title of this episode, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, we ran Wookie. a poll. Okay. We ran a poll. And yes. uh, we asked we people. We treated him to a poll. Yeah. Uh, Chewbacca. And we treated him to a Slovak. And it was, it was Chewbacca has. And then the two options were paws or hands. And um, we will be happy to know that um, hands won. Uh, 73.8% said hands. Oh. 26.2% said pause. So yeah. not a, not a, it, it's a sound win, you know, three to one, but still. Uh, I think, won. I think, you know, uh, hands would imply an opposable thumb, which yeah, to operate I, a, you know. Right, we a, saw the little detonator. Yeah, in, in um, Force Awakens. So I'm, I'm guessing. I don't know. It's been like uh, <laughs> 40 years since O level biology. Um, <laughs> but I'm I'm going to think that there's something about opposable thumbs between paws and hands and hot. I, I just <laughs> opposable, opposable hands. Hands. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I just looked it up, and according to the internet. Uh, yes. The difference between a paw and a hand is generally the ability to grasp things. So mm. whoa, I guess whoa, whoa. Uh, so jump points to <laughs> there John go. there. So <laughs> presumably primates all have hands. I guess mm-hmm. raccoons have hands. Wait a minute. I can but see that. What about the monkey's can... paw? That's a thing, right? Oh, wow. the monkeys can grab things. So well, that, was a, to... that was a paw owned by a monkey. Oh, right, right. <laughs> it didn't. It wasn't from a monkey. Right. A monkey's got so. a paw and a maw. It is. Oh. <laughs> And then there's maw. <laughs> and when a paw monkey and a maw monkey love each other very much. <laughs> oh, grandpa oh. monkey. That's what uh, Darwin <laughs> says, right? Come on. Like, seriously. <laughs> I'll be a monkey's grandpa. Pop <laughs> out. Um, I'm going to be my own grandpa. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> um, I have a, uh, well, speaking of monkeys, we have, yes. a, we have a, tell me about this monkey man, Amon. Alex, Amon you, is Graham. Amon in your book? Can you look he him up is. in your book? Is Amon in the book? Can we can we call him? Amon's in the book. Hmm. Um, he is uh, the head of security for um, the the bad guy. What's his name there? Yeah, Dryden Boss's security Dryden force. Boss. Dryden. Dryden. I keep wanting Which, to call him Dresden for some reason, hmm. but there you oh, go. A little, there's a cool picture of uh, yes. Now. Um, Go ahead. Do you have I, a question? I have two questions. One, doesn't the security force have a name? Isn't it like uh, there? Just says Dryden Moss's security forces. Okay. 
And um, second question is, do we think that um, the the uh, Tote Ra, who we last saw at Coat Check, do we think that he is with this security force? Wait, isn't Coat Check another character? <laughs> the Night Stalker. The Night Stalker, yeah. <laughs> um, do you... Do uh, we, it do sounds we think... Like a oh. tote. It sounds like tote rod says here. Uh, he serves as an attendant, checking guests' weaponry before they are allowed to ascend uh, from the docking vestibule. So yes, tote rod is the guy who that took their weapons uh, mm -hmm. yesterday or whatever now, day it was. So we can. Ago. We think that then tote rod is still at the coat check, so he yes. is not with this. So he is just sitting there and just kind of you know twiddling his thumbs. It's a yacht. It's Tetris. insulated. Then, but yeah, the, the, the later, based on what happens in the rest of this movie, I do want to cut back to him at coat check. He'd be like the like the the peep, the the peep, the guy in the taxi in, in an airplane playing like, space yeah. solitaire. All, all of a sudden, it takes off, and he's like, "Wait, I guess we're moving again." Yep. Um, but yeah, his like everything, his whole like all of his coworkers get killed. <laughs> including his boss and all of a sudden just kind of boss. you know later kira is just kind of like oh um uh, i'm in charge now and everybody else is dead so can i get my coat <laughs> or what <laughs> and i suppose you want a credit for that <laughs> yeah uh, no uh, tote rod do we validate <laughs> that's a joke that i can make now about I, I never knew what that you know how to use that properly but now that i live in la i can make jokes about validating yeah totally Ooh, mrs yeah. big shot la jokes mm. <laughs> You're hot so though. speaking of star wars names by the mm -hmm. way um yes. in enfy's nest yes yes sounds like a charitable society like gilda's mm. club right or gilda's <laughs> place or whatever it's it nest. nest enfy's <laughs> nest mm. uh or like a restaurant or something mm. <laughs> Like neighborhood bar. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was I was thinking more like, you know, um every day dozens of displaced younglings go hungry. Um, <laughs> that's why they that's why they, they all wind up right. in Enfis Nest. We saw those, right. you know, yeah. That's so the sad uh, piano music. Yes. Yeah. Sarah Space Sarah McLaughlin. Mm -hmm. It's getting it's getting odd at this point with like so many people from the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Like they're they're employing everyone. And yeah. so, you know, um, uh, I, I was trying to figure out where I had seen Dryden before and it's like, oh, the vision. Yes. Mm. And then, uh, Enfys is like, oh, right. Falcon of the winter soldier. Yes. And yes. there it's, it's, it's like, you know, it used to be the, the thing with British actors, there were a dozen of them and they were appeared in everything. Now it's right. like, yeah. oh, MCU actors everywhere. <laughs> well, the, yeah, this uh, the Disney era seems to be very Game of Thrones. Uh, that yes. seems to be like mm -hmm. their their the pool of actors they're drawing a lot from. And which makes sense. Of Game I mean, of Thrones yeah. at the time mm -hmm. when I first saw this movie, I had I was like it was the whole thing with Amelia Clark. I never really watched Game of Thrones. Um, hmm. That surprises well, me. Well, it's you know I. I prefer the books and just mm. um but anyway i didn't put two and two together and go oh that amelia clark because you know <laughs> she's got the dark hair in yeah uh, the brunette yeah. here uh, it was kind of like the same way the sigourney weaver when she was in um oh, uh, galaxy, galaxy, quest? Quest. galaxy quest thank you with a blonde yeah. wig it's like whoa it's a new sigourney weaver we all win <laughs> um no, but yeah i totally it, it took it was like years after this was released where it's like oh that amelia clark okay that's 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 the person got it i'm yeah, also very said, slow you know this by now i'm very very <laughs> slow <laughs> I thought it was just a connection issue, but uh, she uh, she has said that it, she does not get recognized very often because without her blonde wig, people don't seem to, or riding the back of a dragon, people don't seem to know who she is. <laughs> right, yeah. I guess that's, I, I, don't know, I guess, I don't know if that's good or bad for an actor, because on the one hand, you don't want to be a wig. You don't want to be like, yeah, well, you know, I, I'm only, you know, but uh, you also don't want people to forget about you either. So, well, she if they do, you just. Put the wig back on. Everybody's okay. Like, hey, we love that person. <laughs> so when she goes it's to like, a restaurant, she's like, oh, I want a reservation. And they're like, oh, sorry, we're all booked up. She has to go in her bag and put the wig on. Now you want to give me a reservation? And they're like, oh, it's yes. like Perry the platypus with the hat. 
Right. It's, yeah. <laughs> sorry, throwing a Phineas and Ferb <laughs> reference there. Oh, well, oh yeah, that was a couple of weeks ago. Was yeah. Uh, <laughs> John, I thought. Um. Yes. The the. Uh, there was some. There was another crossover that I had popped up a couple of times. The new things, and it's interesting to see the new pool of of yeah, actors from all over the place. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the singularity will be achieved when every single human on Earth is playing a role in the MCU. You know what I mean? Like right. We're all cast in some Marvel movie or another. Right. Well, because so, it does happen yeah. in, you know, real Earth. You know, that, was <laughs> like, that, was the, that was the difference that it was, you know, hmm. happened in the real world. It happened in New York. So it's like, so yeah. theoretically we are. I, yeah, well, by association, I think we all are. Because there's an episode, there's a. Was it an episode of a TV show? Or was it in the comics? I think it was an episode of a, one of the TV shows where um, I think, I'm, I'm, I could be getting this completely wrong, but I think in one of the episodes of the TV shows, uh, one of the characters is watching Cake Boss or makes a reference to Cake Boss. And therefore, if Cake Boss is in the MCU, <laughs> Ralph is in the MCU. And if Ralph is on our show, we're in the MCU. And then John, now you're in because you're on our show. Oh my gosh. So, I am so pleased with this development. I think that's I think that's how it works. I think we're all in the MCU now. But what about <laughs> how do we know that's not how do we know that's our cake boss and not a multiverse version, a different cake boss? It could also be a scroll cake boss. A scroll mm. cake boss. <laughs> scroll cake boss. <laughs> mm, some fresh scroll cakes. <laughs> you know, honestly, I mean, right now, uh, Star Wars is, is like this was the first. So, so this movie um, uh, is the first time they mentioned the Pikes, if I'm not mistaken. And then the Pikes pop up in the, Pikes the Book of up. Boba Fett. Yes. Um, and first live action mentioned. They were recurring characters in the um, one of the animated Clone series. Wars, I, think, I right. forget which. Okay, one. Yeah. okay. either Rebels I, I, or Clone Wars. I forget. But yeah, yeah, okay. I'm not as familiar with the animated stuff, hmm. but yeah, I mean, it's just it's it's getting a little bit to a point. Like when you watch the uh, YouTube spoilers or Easter egg things afterwards, you yeah. see like the whole 50, 60, 70 references you totally missed because you hadn't read that issue of Daredevil. Yeah, uh, six hundred thirty-seven or <laughs> um, yeah. And so now the pikes looked a little bit like fish, didn't they? When they popped up in the yes, they were. Uh, and so you got the monkeys here with uh, Dryden's security force. By the way, this is whenever I mean, and this is the thing which was bugged me with Planet of the Apes as well. Um, when you've got those kind of prosthetics, uh, a monkeyish prosthetic, mm -hmm. and the mouth essentially just moves up and down. Yeah. So. Um, I forget what the line was that Amen says something like we we have them. It's all done. Try saying that line without moving your. I mean, you can move your mouth open and close, but not moving your lips. You know, we have our hair. <laughs> I have, it's like yeah, it's, it's it's this weird disconnect <laughs> where you know the the mouth is moving, but there is this um, the hidden valley. Uh, uh, sorry. Not even valley. That's depressing. <laughs> Made me um, hungry. Yes. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's this, this weird disconnect for me when you see uh, a, a monkey like character's mouth move and that's just straight up and down. It's like, you know, uh, the country bear jamboree at Disney. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the words that, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or a Muppet, um, just kind of like. Hey, yes, hey, but, hey, hey. but I guess it looks better with the Muppets uh, for some reason because you expect that from a puppet, but not actually from a uh, an ape-like creature. Um, well, it also, it also helps because the Muppets are, they don't look realistic at all. So yes. it, it, them just opening their mouth and closed doesn't bother you, whereas a totally realistic looking creature yeah. as, as Amon Grimm is, anything that does look fake like that is going to stand out even more, like like the Hidden Valley, like you said. Yes, so. yes, Hidden Valley. <laughs> so hungry right now. <laughs> well, let me point out one thing. Uh, sure. The character Amon Grimm yes. um, is played by an actor named Aiden Cook, who uh, British actor, okay, um, English actor, it says. I know it's yeah. a subtle yes. difference to uh, Americans, but he's been in The Force Awakens. He played Strond Tugs, mm. the alien. 
Um, oh, Rogue that's One. Strawn Tux. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Not the not the not no. the senator, the other one. No, no. <laughs> um, but he's been in all of the Disney, all of the Disney uh, Star Wars films. So he's really? got a recur- recurring thing he going must be, here. He must be their all star. <laughs> <laughs> Including, he plays the character Bulio in uh, Rise of Skywalker, and I was like, who the heck is Bulio? Bulio is the character voiced by Mark Hamill in. Uh, I don't know if you remember. He's the guy who's like. Uh, at some point they uh anyway it uh, me describing it would not there's a thousand well, uh, characters in that story so it's not like but, I, yeah. but one of them was waving at some point yeah apparently. there was somebody who got like they got some plans or something and they were looking up into a hatch and there was an alien character waving at them we had kind of like a triangle shaped oh, head wait wait then he gets beheaded is that the guy who gets beheaded at the start like boy just that i don't remember war. <laughs> yeah, at the very start, it's, it's, they, they, they get the they, they get the uh, they get the plans downloaded right. through that huge thick tube because yeah. you know miniaturization is something which apparently was totally forgotten. Uh-huh. Um, and uh, Poe Dameron says something like, "What can we do to thank you?" And he says, "Just win the war or some such." And the oh, next okay. time we see him, his head is thrown onto a table. Um, oh dear, I, I didn't see. If that's if that's the dude I'm thinking of, um, but you haven't seen that movie yet because that one's coming up in the series, correct? <laughs> that one I did see one time in the theater, and I've not really? rewatched it since. Yeah, uh, so um, so I will quickly say this in its defense: it's it's down in the bottom third for me. It's above the prequels, even though I did enjoy I I really did enjoy uh, Revenge of the Sith a lot more than I thought I would. Hmm um it was my favorite of the prequels yeah absolutely without without question um but you know uh rise of skywalker was a mess but there was just enough star warsy goodness in it that i enjoyed it um kind of like uh, for me it's below and you guys don't do this anymore but i've got my order written out here oh let's hear um okay it goes uh number one always will be just because of the uh memories is star wars yes it's star wars it's not called a new hope it was called motion, star wars <laughs> the motion, the motion picture, picture. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um so far you're 100 percent right yeah <laughs> i concur um number two is really close between empire and last jedi yeah. i really really love last jedi it was uh fantastic it was something i didn't know i wanted um and i just every time i rewatch it i it gets a little bit better i just really really love it then there's a little bit of a gap um but those three are like the the medalists for me of mm-hmm. the movies um probably an equal four for me is force awakens and rogue one um mm. Force Awakens is totally a reboot, relaunch, and you know, mimicked so many of the beats of Star Wars, but it was still incredibly fun. And uh, the graphics, some of the graphic images are my favorites in the whole uh, saga. Um, and Rogue One is just amazing. It's depressing as hell, but I just love that movie. Um, mm-hmm. Then there's uh a little bit of a gap again and at number six is return of the jedi um which i rose in my esteem esteem uh since uh i started watching it with my child uh when she was five to six and her love of the ewoks just swept over me like a parental wave um and even though you know the it's like oh look we're blowing up another death star um still it was a i i i did not remember it enjoying it that much when it was in the theaters back in mm-hmm. the day um again close here so we're going like equal seventh place probably solo and the rise of skywalker um solo was quite enjoyable rise of skywalker was quite enjoyable there are stuff i loved in both of them um solo and i i really listening to some of your uh previous shows for uh solo uh minute i totally agree i think solo would probably work best as a tv series a six mm-hmm. episode it's it seems 
a little bit disjointed. Um, you know, going straight from fleeing Corellia to the heist, to the first heist, um, to all of a sudden, hey, I know this guy with the ship, uh, to the Kessel Run. Um, just didn't have that sense of grandeur, which I really kind of want from the movies. Um, and yeah, Rise of Skywalker, obviously there's a lot you can criticize about it, but I still really liked it. It was, um, I think I've told you guys the story. This the one of the few times I've lied to my wife, uh, <laughs> when we went to see it in the theaters, because following the whole, uh, prequel, um, uh, Oh, let's just call it a mess. Um, and I, I, you know, everybody can like whatever they like. I simply didn't like the prequels. I've got this is, you know, people, some people like them for their own reasons. And that's cool. But I realized I was so, so um, Rise of Sky. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry. I'm thinking Force Awakens. I lied to my wife about Force Awakens, not Rise of oh, Skywalker. Right. Right. <laughs> so I'm probably going to put Rise of Skywalker. Yeah, there was just enough. Um, enough Star Warsy goodness that I enjoyed it, but boy, I wish somebody had sat down with before the trilogy and said, you know, we should really maybe think these out as a whole. <laughs> um, then, yeah, nine uh, <laughs> Revenge of the Sith, um, much, much, much more enjoyable than I thought it would be. Ten Phantom Menace. Not a great movie, but there were bits I did like. And, you know, whatever you've got, Ewan McGregor doing Obi-Wan Kenobi, that's pretty fantastic. It's a gift, honestly. Mm -hmm. I, I just love his portrayal. Um, and, you know, seeing briefly Jedi being Jedi at the start and then the duel of the fates at the end. Um, and <laughs> the attack of the clones is horrible. Um, I it's, it's unwatchable. And I just, I will never forget um outrageous pete seemed to totally lose his love of life during that season towards mm. the end um uh, but yeah anyway so dark yes. times <laughs> dark. <laughs> um but yeah so that that that's that's um but yeah when force uh when the force awakens was released i lied to my wife because i was so i am so emotionally invested invested in star wars as a franchise that we went to see the movie before we took my daughter because you know we wanted to check it out first mm -hmm. and we're sitting in the theater the first new star war in how many years like 15, 15 16 something um and it's winter mm -hmm. you know and i'm so nervous i just don't want this to suck and i <laughs> don't want it to suck so badly i'm actually like shivering in my seat <laughs> and my wife, my wife looks over at me and she says, honey, you're, you're shivering. What's wrong? I said, I'm cold. <laughs> <laughs> and then she took my giant winter jacket and put it over me. Oh, <laughs> I, I couldn't shivering and because, sweating. Yeah. Shivering and sweating. It was like the you know, star Wars fever. <laughs> um, gotcha. <laughs> but yes, by the way, going back to the, what we're supposed to be talking about. Oh, um, what's that? Well, <laughs> <laughs> At the end of this minute, um, when Dryden says, excellent work, um, and thank you. I mean, are we sure he wasn't just praying? Hmm. Excellent work. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> he's, he's a very religious yeah. fellow. That and may the force be with you and also with you. <laughs> well, we don't know what his religion might be. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't know. Yeah. I don't know. Near religion. Right. Near yes. religion. Yeah. Yes. Um, but right now I'm just, I'm just totally psyched on Star Wars. Okay. I just got off watching the, I, we finished. That's a much better turn of phrase. We just <laughs> finished watching, uh, the solo, uh, the, the Kenobi finale. Mm -hmm. And I love that so much. So, and my, my kid and I, we've just been running through the Lego star Wars, mm -hmm. uh, the complete Skywalker saga oh. on the switch, which is a total reworking of the old, Lego Star Wars. I thought they were just going to add some new chapters, but they've totally redone it. Mm, wow! And and then, like I said, you know, for the first time going into Kenobi, finally, finally, finally watched Revenge of the Sith. So mm. this is like a fantastic time for me. So if I'm seem if I seem a little hyper, a little excited right now, it's like I think my kid is tired of me listening to podcasts discussing episode six of Kenobi and like rewatching, <laughs> rewatching uh, Kenobi versus 
Vader 2.0. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> which, oh my God. I mean, the, 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 everything about that. Okay, I know you guys, I, I, I heard you guys talking about it, and I know you got to do this day in, day out, and maybe it loses a little bit of the magic for you, and I get that. Mm-hmm. But Too much magic. When, that's the problem. Yeah. <laughs> but when Kenobi is standing there with the rocks behind him, I'm like, oh, yes. Oh, yes, please throw them <laughs> at Vader. Please throw them at Vader. And then force pushing Vader like he's a puppet. It was like, uh-huh. oh, it was, I was like, I, 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 I was squealing in delight. It's such a good time to be hmm. a Star Wars fan. I'm sorry. No, it's all right. No, you, don't apologize. We're, we're, <laughs> we're soaking in this enthusiasm, we're letting it, letting it, you know, fill oh, our souls. Oh, my gosh. I did not. I did not. When going into Kenobi, I was okay with it. You know, I was kind of one of these people who was like, oh, it's Tatooine again. Oh, it's more characters again. Let's see. The Mandalorian was good. Let's, let's, yeah. you know, uh, but look, it's the Mandalorian and Tatooine for some yeah. odd reason. <laughs> now it's like, oh yes, more Tatooine, more, more characters, <laughs> more Kenobi, more force, more lightsabers, more everything. Um, so yeah, you, this is, this is probably, you, you caught me at my fanboyishness uh, of it. That's all. awesome. That's kind of what we wanted. <laughs> and also, by the way, Kenobi is the first thing, uh, the first Star Wars television that my daughter was invested in. Hmm. Uh, she, you know, she, I, I, I tried. I mean, I did, I'm not. I don't try hard. As I, if she likes something, she likes it. If she doesn't, she doesn't. She loves the movies. Uh, she, she loved uh, Ray as a character very much. Um, but you know when when um uh oh i'm, I'm blanking on her name um Generous anakin's Hill? pad one oh. and anakin's oh, pad ahsoka. One. ahsoka thank you oh my so <laughs> i'm so sorry my daughter if you listen to this i'm i feel ashamed for you <laughs> um but yeah when when ahsoka was on um uh mandalorian I, I was hoping that that might be something which she would enjoy. And it was mm. fine. Yeah, she loves Ahsoka. Ahsoka is definitely her favorite character. Mm. But no, uh, we watched every episode of Kenobi together, which was fantastic. And uh, again, you know, playing through, uh, playing through Star Wars Lego is you're reliving this whole period we went through when she was six or seven when we played the first Star Wars Lego right. and. So yeah, this is just a really exciting Star Wars time for me. I don't think yeah. you've ever seen me this excited before. <laughs> or I'm usually jolly before. for uh, yeah. yeah, that's right. Um, it, it's it's so much more forced usually. <laughs> but this is just delightful. All forced, I guess. Uh, <laughs> nice. Well, we're especially glad to hear you liked Rise of Skywalker because, of course. We are going to ask yeah, you to return you for one of those for uh, one of those minutes. So, well, uh, thank you. Anything thank you, you want to uh, plug before you wrap up minute one eleven? Well, yes, actually, there is indeed. Since you caught me at a, a good moment, uh, my new book is out. Hey. The Tower of Igor. Finally, the first new Dork Tower collection in like twelve years. Wow! And and there's this lovely double page spread. Um, well, you guys are in it in a couple of places, uh, oh. obviously. And um, the big one is here. And I'm sure you can <laughs> oh, see yeah, exactly the... where you are. <laughs> that one. Um, I'll try to f- see if I can throw it in on the YouTube. I'll drop an image in there. Oh, there Everybody you go. Can see. Yeah. Uh, but also, yes, we're very also, honored that you included us in your yeah. double page spread. It's, but uh, you're also you've got you've got a prime position. Uh, you got your own panel. Oh right boy! There. So nice. Nice. immortality then, at last. Yes. <laughs> and Alex, I probably owe you royalties for the number of times I used box office poison characters in this book. <clears throat> I will uh, look forward to that check. <laughs> <laughs> I will look forward to the lawsuit. <laughs> We're just gonna have to t- send it right back to John for his all-star appearances. So I think it all <laughs> yeah, yeah, it all bounces out. It's like yeah, when so they you, you guys are now you guys are all stars in Dork Tower Aww. and in my heart. Oh, 
Well, thank you, John, for uh, joining us once again and kicking off another All Star Week with us. And you see, uh, I'm only I'm only ever here one episode per show per season, but it's like I, I take up a week's worth of talking. So it's, <laughs> well, you've got to get it out of your system. Yeah, so you thanks for having you on for two weeks of of Rise of Skywalker. <laughs> two weeks of Rise of Skywalker for John. Yeah, uh, it's contractually obligated. There you um, go. All right, I guess that will wrap up minute number 111. And just a reminder, over on our Patreon show, uh, we're going to be reviewing uh, Cassian, which is going to be coming out uh, shortly by the time this comes out, or a couple of weeks anyway. A month or two. So, um, yeah. It's a good time. Reminder, StarWarsMinute.com slash Patreon. Go sign up and join us here tomorrow for another Star Wars Minute. Star Wars Minute. Star Wars Minute. Minute. (laughs)